Welcome to the Liverpool Community Podcast. I'm your host, Chase Johnson Lynch. And once again, I'm joined by a fascinating guest, someone who I like trolled on the internet and tracked down and thought this person would be very interesting to hear their story and what they're all about. So I'm joined today by John Moffitt, who is the managing director of Capital and Centric. How are you doing, John? I'm good, thanks, Chase. How are you? All right, John. I mean, you know, pretty much it's like uh, one of the things I saw on the Internet, uh, obviously, on um, LinkedIn, you know, was I was following the Depot Project uh, and a woman named Lynn Saunders um, from the, uh, the film office. And then I was like, you know, wait a minute. I heard about this Littlewoods Project and the film fest you guys are doing. And I was like, hey, I'd like to talk to somebody about that. And I was really surprised that it wasn't just somebody, but it's like the main man. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, we're we're happy to engage, um, get the word out, and tell people about what what's happening with the Littlewoods building. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure we've all seen the signs for Capital Central all over the city and stuff like that. But a lot of people who are familiar with the Littlewoods building because it's on Edge Lane and everything else like that, and it's what they're calling like the Hollywood of the North coming. Yeah. So if you could tell us a little bit about the Littlewoods project. Um, because it's, it's, it's separate from the depot and everything else like that. So if you could tell us like what the Littlewoods project is about. Sure. Yeah. The Littlewoods project is a, a film and TV complex mm. converting the, um, 1930s iconic art deco Littlewoods wow. building, which everyone, uh, absolutely loves, um, in the city and turning it into a, a world-class film and TV hub. So we're, we have two studios that anchor the development. They're yeah. 20,000 square foot each. So uh, the same as the, the depot. And the depot is linked to Littlewoods in the sense that yeah. it's an enabler to bring all of those economic benefits that the main project will deliver when it's finished, yeah. but to deliver those in the interim. So they're a temporary facility delivered by the city council to bring all of those economic benefits that the Littlewoods project will bring when it's finished. Now, John, you know, I always like to let people know I'm old. Not as old as Phil, but I'm old. <laughs> And so when you say 1930s, can you tell us a little bit about the style and the look that this is going to have? Yeah, well, the, the main buildings themselves are going to stay very much uh, as they are in terms of we're not changing the architectural mm. style. They're no. truly iconic. They'd be uproar if we ever suggested Well, maybe I haven't the seen it before, so maybe if you still just describe okay, it I'll, for me. Uh, yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll describe it for you. So um, the buildings are epic on every proportion. Wow. So they're 200 meters long. Uh, there's two original 1938 wings. They're designed by Gerald de Corsi Fraser, wow. built uh, as the HQ of the Littlewoods Pools um, and also uh, the JNC Moore's Printing Company. So the East Wing, which is the single story element, was where they printed all the pools, coupons, and the catalogs uh, for Littlewoods. And then the, the West Wing, which is the two story element with the clock tower, uh, that was the a clock tower. Uh, it has a clock tower, yeah. Wow, like Back to the Future? Uh, <laughs> Maybe it, not. No, it's a 200 foot high tower wow. with a, a clock face, which again is is truly iconic. Yeah, yeah. No, I can imagine. I can imagine. I mean, uh, obviously, it's going to probably double as a sets as well, right? So that's what I mean about the old fashioned Hollywood system. You know, like if you went into MGM Studios. Yeah. Is it going to be something like that? Well, well um, I think that the the style of the building, the iconic yeah. uh, Art Deco. Yeah. white stucco is so kind of synonymous with Hollywood that actually if you look at a number of the larger studios around the world they have those kind of iconic art yeah. deco structures so it fits yeah. perfectly with the the nature of the building definitely and this is also great because I mean I'm sure we talked about it a little bit but I'm pretty sure you're aware is like Liverpool has in the past couple of years become such a uh, strong mecca for filming for outside studios especially Americans and stuff. Would you agree? Yeah, oh, totally. So, yeah. I mean, for for like a company such as yourself to kind of like jump in there and create this studio space, you know, up here, uh, up here in the north, because usually, you know, everything you had to go down south for, right? Yeah. And, and and stuff. Or when we had Media City several years ago, where everybody was running off to Manchester, you're keeping it right here. You're keeping it real right here. Liverpool. Exactly. I mean, isn't that, isn't that a, a fantastic? Is that is that what Capital Century is all about? It's just like, you yeah, know. Yeah. So as an organization, uh, there's a few points I'll pick up on there. But okay. um, as an organization, we're a social impact developer. So we are here to deliver yeah. 
lasting positive social change through delivering redevelopment of the, the built environment. Mm. Um, and basically all that means is that when we leave a development, when we finish, there has to be, it has to enrich lives. It has to yeah. enhance community that it's based in. Um, so there's some core principles that follow through everything that we do. Um, and they apply to the Little Woods project, uh, the same as any other. A few things though that I want to just quickly pick up on. So yeah. firstly, we're very keen that we're not competing with Media City. So Oh, I'm Media sorry. City, I didn't really no, 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 mean I, competing, but yeah. No, no, but it's it's a valid point though that we are in a different sector. So that's kind of mainstream TV. Yeah. Um we're very much kind of high end TV and feature length film. Yeah. Um but in the other point that you made about Liverpool being a mecca for film and TV, um, that's been something that is I don't know, 20, 30 years in the making, which Lynn, who you mentioned earlier, yeah. and Kevin and the rest of the, the film office team have done an amazing job in the city and probably haven't really been as yeah. well recognized as they should have been for the oh, work definitely. that they've done. Establishing Liverpool as the go-to place for exterior shooting in, in the north. Um, when I've been chatting to people in the industry, it, it has been kind of universally accepted that Liverpool has the best film office in the UK. Yeah. Um, and that's something that we should shout about a bit more. And really the Littlewoods building is the culmination of all that work that they've done over decades, yeah. building the reputation of the city as somewhere that can host, you know, large blockbuster films or, or high end TV dramas mm -hmm. um, and do it fantastically well. Yeah. And so we're the most filmed city outside of London. Um, mm -hmm. We have 1300 days of filming every year. Yeah. Um, but until the depot was built, we didn't have anywhere to do interior shooting. So yeah. whilst it added kind of maybe 15 to 20 million a year in terms of GVA, um, with purpose-built studio space, um, the Littlewoods building will deliver 200 million a year to the yeah. local economy and 4,000 jobs. So it is a huge wow. step change. That's uh, the major thing is all that, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's the jobs that it offers. You know, because, I mean, I totally agree with what you're saying. I mean, because Liverpool was really known as, like, because it manages to keep maintain the old style of its streets. Like, they would shoot, like, period, a lot of period dramas, like Foyle's War yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, because, you know, you could walk down several streets like Cannon Street and you could still have gas lights uh, up um, and uh, cobblestones and all that. But um, beyond all that is, is the fact that, that you know, you guys are actually, you're opening this summer, right? Is I believe uh, for the public, but you're, let's say you're starting off with this one off charity event. Of the Film um, and Food Fest, yeah. Yeah, yeah. On July, or let's get it right, or Saturday, July 15th, because tickets are available, right? They are, they're available immediately at the lutwoodsproject.com. Mm -hmm. So not Eventbrite or anything like that? Or? It goes through to Eventbrite. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell us about the uh, the food fest, the film and food fest. So this is actually part of our consultation process for the planning application, which we'll submit in the next month. Mm -hmm. um, so we're hosting an event. Most people don't know what a film studio looks like on the inside. Yeah, definitely. And so they don't have any concept of what this really means. So we're opening up the depot for the first time to the public, wow. um, which will be really exciting. Mm. Um, and so you can come down, you can catch uh, a film screen. And so during the day, we're gonna have a family event with Matilda the Musical. Mm. Um, and then at night, it'll be a more grown up affair with the Batman screening. But then there's lots of other stuff going on in terms of street food and uh, live music and uh, crazy golf. And so it's, it's kind of like <laughs> Crazy a, golf. Yeah, there's all kinds going on. Um, yeah. And tickets are, as you say, five pounds um, per person, but all of the proceeds go to a local charity, the Unity Center. Um, and so it's all for a good cause. But whilst you're there, you can then give us your thoughts, your feedback on our plans for the building. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm a local boy from Tosta myself, so I'm well aware of the Unity Center. So when I heard that, I was like, Really? Whoa, this is fantastic. Tell me, what inspired the idea of uh, uh, the Unity as a charity to donate proceeds to? I'm also a Toxus boy. I'm oh, Toxus yeah. born and bred, yeah. Well, um, I'm not born and bred, but right, yeah. I like, I've been here 22 years, <laughs> so I like to think, you know. You're an honorary scouser now. Thank you. Thank you, bro. But go ahead. Um, tell me, what inspired uh, this for you? Well, so we, we run a charity called Regeneration Brainery, um, mm -hmm. and 
we set that up in 2015 yeah. and essentially it's to encourage people from diverse or disadvantaged backgrounds into the property sector which is often a sector which is dominated by people who knew someone yeah and that's how they made their way into the industry so we're trying to provide a link for kids that don't have a natural link into the industry so we go into schools on a regular basis um i was in a school in liverpool just last week talking about property regeneration place making what it's all about really um and then we offer those kids that are interested uh, a chance to come for a free week-long boot camp where wow. they'll meet um, a world-class architect and they'll design a hypothetical building up or they'll walk a live construction site with a project manager and they get exposure to all the different disciplines in the property sector um, and then would you like to say when that is or, or? so it's a rolling program so okay um, uh, I'll need to check when the oh, next okay, one okay. is in the... Oh, that was a question I didn't ask from ahead of time. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, so uh, we, we give kids that opportunity and then mm. they go into a grad club where they can get work placements and uh, job opportunities. And so yeah. we've seen young people now who wouldn't have known anything about the sector come through, be inspired, go away, get a degree, and then yeah. through the grad club, get a job in the sector and they're back on the program as ambassadors. Wow. Um, and so one of our ambassadors, um, she's a, uh, a, an interior architecture student at John Moores University. Right. Um, and she was chatting to me about a project that she had been working on, going into the Unity Center, talking to the kids and, and uh, each of the students had done a design for the building because they're currently looking to upgrade their facilities. Yeah. And just the enthusiasm that she had and uh, the, the project she shared, we thought, well, this is a, a perfect fit uh, in terms of a, a charitable organization that we could donate the funds to that might help them improve their facilities. Mm. Nice one. I mean, it sounds like you guys are uh, doing a lot. Um, I usually, around this time, I usually ask people, you know, like, what's your origin story? All right? You know, because I'm a comic book fan. So, John Moffat, you know, what's your origin story? Like, how did you get started with uh, Capital and Centric or where, you know, yeah. your um, beginnings? So, as I say, I, I grew up in Toxteth, um, lived there the first 25 years of my life. Wow. Um, I went away to university, but I, I came back to the city. Um, and while I, I went away to uni, I, I did a degree in economics. Um, and when I came back, Liverpool 1 had been built. And yeah. I thought, oh, this is... This is dramatic, the change that it's made to my city. It's huge. Exactly. Um, civic pride, you know, the, the city centre, there was nothing there before Liverpool won. It was... You know, it, I it can't was, even remember what was there before because, I, like I said, I've been here 22 years and I can't even remember what I think we've erased there. it from our memory because <laughs> yeah. it was so bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, but actually people had some pride in the city centre and yeah. they had some pride in their city. And as a result, you know, there was less antisocial behaviour. There, um, there was so many positive benefits yeah. to this development. I thought, well, that's what I want to do. Um, I didn't know that I hadn't done the right degree, though. Um, All right. So I sent my CV off to 70 odd different companies. Really? I got 69 rejections. No um, way. Yeah. And then eventually one company contacted me and they said, oh, uh, come for a, a chat. <laughs> and um, so I said, okay. So I went to Manchester, had a chat with them. They said, oh, come back and do a presentation to our board on how to make money out of land. Well, I didn't know anything about it. So I went on Amazon wow. and I bought a book that was titled How to Make Money Out of Land. I read the book. I went back and I presented uh, the, <laughs> what I'd read back yeah. to them. And uh, eventually, somehow, they gave me an opportunity. So I, they took me on for six months. Um, and then the downturn hit. And uh, I, I guess because I was... Uh, fairly cheap resource i survived mm. uh yeah. through working through the the recession and so that i've spent the last 17 years as uh, a development development director or um now managing director at capital centric wow um did you, did and you then, believe that you would get there as a doctor boy uh i never really stopped to think about it i think i just had yeah. a vision of what i wanted to do and nice that kind of drove me yeah. um but when capital centric approached me um, to join them and told me that they were working on the Littlewoods building. That was, that was it. Uh, yeah. It was a, a no brainer. Um, yeah. and it's just been, um, genuinely 
such a, a privilege to work on the redevelopment of the building. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy because wasn't it a dress shop or uh, dressmakers, Littlewoods? No, so Littlewoods was the uh, precursor to the National Lottery. So they ran a pool. Um, so you used to play. There were 16 million players every week. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if you predicted the, the scores correctly, then you would win the equivalent of winning the lottery now. Oh. Um, and the building actually has an amazing history. So prior to it becoming the home of the Littlewoods Pools, um, it was actually the site of uh, a fisheries exhibition Right. Uh, which Queen Victoria attended in the late 1800s. And wow. in town, there's actually a, a stone frieze on one of the buildings, I can't remember which one, of her in her carriage coming to that site wow. um, to attend the, the fisheries exhibition. Um, and then after that, it obviously um, became the home of the pools. So they finished the buildings in 1938, which is obviously a really bad time to finish your new HQ. Um, but they did... I think what is synonymous with Liverpool and they re-engineered themselves, they reimagined themselves. And so instead of just laying everyone off uh, because the war had started, they turned to printing. So in the first 48 hours of the war, they printed 17 million calling up papers. Mm. Um, but that obviously wasn't going to keep them going the whole way through the war. So they decided to make parachutes. They'd never made a parachute before. Um, they made a prototype, sent it off to the MOD. They got approval in a couple of months. And then during the course of the Second World War, they were the the second biggest global manufacturer of parachutes. Um, and actually they made um, 12 million shells, 6 million fuses, 5 million parachutes, hundreds of thousands of barrage balloons. They disassembled Jeeps and packed them into crates to send to the front line to be reassembled. They, the, the top floor of the building, there was 1300 men and women sat around big tables with a sticker on it, which said all of the kind of known languages uh, and yeah. they were spoken around that table. And during the course of the Second World War, as the um, MI6's mail check-in service, it was yeah. the HQ, um, they read every single piece of ingoing and outgoing international mail to check for state secrets being given away. And then it went back to being the Pools HQ, which was, I think it was the, the biggest private organization in Europe in the 1980s. Uh, so it was like having the Jeff Bezos of our yeah. day here in Liverpool. Um, they were a huge organization. And the great thing about them was that they paid a, a living wage and they, they were hugely forward thinking in the way that they treated their staff. Yeah. And that's why the building has such a special place in the heart of yeah. the city because they treated their staff like family. Um, they, they cared for them. Um, and so uh, it, it's a building that everyone has a relative that worked in yeah, the building, yeah, including yeah. myself. Yeah. Um, it's so like, it's, it's like that in Liverpool, you know, like with the sugar mills and the what Tate and Lyle and you know all of those different things, isn't it? Yeah, it's very. Uh, you know, that's a fascinating story. Never thought I'd get a history lesson there. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, but that was really cool. Well, we're passionate about the history of the building because it's yeah. part of its legacy. And well, history is uh, very important, isn't it? You know, um, the thing about it is, is that like, so when you have this opening. And you open up for the public like you're doing. I think also, too, is there's a botanical gardens being built to kind of like uh, regenerate that little area as well. well the, the botanic gardens already exist, so they're, they front onto the yeah. west wing of the building. But they're yeah. not in our ownership. Right, 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 right. But I mean, like, um, uh, what I meant was like, okay, but by opening it up to the community, because usually we just drive past it. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, usually that's what people tend to do: is just, just, just drive past it. Oh yeah, that looks interesting. So, but now we're being able to have access. Is like, isn't there going to be, um, or will there be opportunities yeah. for there to be like classes or or projects for people to get involved in or something like that? Yeah. I know you say you're not doing your company's not doing that, but you're looking to be able to open up in that way. Hopefully. Well, there's, there's there's two ways that we'll mm. bring access to the building. So it, it is a, a key principle across all of our developments that wherever possible, we try and open them up to the public. Yeah. Um, so that they're not gated communities, but actually they are fully integrated into the community that they're That's based nice. in. Um, so the first one will be the hangar, which is there's a domed concrete structure which sits between the two wings of the building, which wow. was a... It, it was added in the 1960s as a canteen. 
for the Jane Seymour's printing company. Okay. Um, and so we're bringing that back as a canteen, but not as a canteen. It's a, a, a mixed use, uh, multi-purpose event space uh, with a food and drink offer. Yeah. Um, so it's it's much more than a canteen. But the idea is that that would then be open to members of the public uh, out of office hours. So during office hours, it would be for employees yeah, on site um, yeah, uh, but then way. of an evening and weekends it would then open up to members of the public which is amazing because that building has never been open to members wow. of the public um other than if you were an employee um you had no reason really to go there um and because yeah. there's such a a huge interest in the building i think it'll be a really exciting thing for the city to have is that, is that around the digital school liverpool digital uh i the pool digital, like over there, uh, there's a there. Well, I took the my innovation master- park. Yeah, I took my masters over there. Uh, okay, it was called the it was called Liverpool Digital, um, the Screen School. Is it okay, no, yeah, is it no yeah. longer there. Uh, not on site, no. Oh. Um, <laughs> right, it was um, a while ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's definitely nothing on site at the moment. Um, right. But the second thing would be that we want uh, an education offer on site. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Because we want the ability to draw in kids from the local area yeah. and to give them those skills, uh, to upskill them or reskill them at, yeah. in order to take advantage of the, the job opportunities that we're going to create because it's a, a huge yeah. employment generator. Yeah. No, no. It, it's fascinating the ethos of your company and what you're talking about. <clears throat> Obviously, it's coming from down, from your passion, you know, because, I mean, you know, as I was saying to you, our camera is like there's so many opportunities you know in the creative media industries that uh, people just need to find their avenue in yeah and then I, once they're in you know they're upskilling and training you know it's just kind of like you know easy to happen but it's just about getting in isn't it i you completely know? agree and i mean you know it's opportunities for people and it sounds like your company is all about that with your community engagement would you say that yeah very much so um and i think being engaged with the industry i'm not in the film and tv industry at all but um having engaged with it a lot meeting very senior people and chatting to them about their origin story like you were saying um it's interesting to hear so many of them say that they started as a runner and then they retrained and then they became something else and then they upskilled again and they became something and now they're you know the head of a production house or the exactly um, man the fast track is, is 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 real you know what yeah. I mean? And, and there's so, such social mobility in yes, film and TV that I think it's a perfect opportunity to place that building and, and all of the jobs and skills that it's going to generate in an area which, you know, is crying out for something like mm-hmm. this to happen. Yeah. Well, you know, John, I just want to know, is like, you know, one of the last things I want to ask you is that, I mean, capital and centric, you know, I mean, this is your, your ethos, their ethos, and everything else like that. I mean, obviously, you have this Little Woods project coming up. Uh, I'll say the date again, um, of because uh, it's a one-off of uh, July 15th. But, you know, anything else that, that uh, is of your interest? I know you said it might be outside of Liverpool, but anything else that you want people to know about Capital Centric? Um I know they can always look it up. Yeah. I know they can always look it up, bro, but I got you. I got you right here. <laughs> well, we have a, a portfolio of developments um, yeah. across the, the North and the Midlands, um, and that's expanding geographically. Yeah. Um, and all of our projects have those same core principles of accessibility, um, permeability, mm. uh, a consistency of design quality. Yeah. Um, everything we do has to be multi-award winning uh, from yeah. an architectural perspective. Um, but it also has to engage with its local community. And that yeah. is different for each individual development, um, in both in terms of what the development is, in terms of nature, but also in terms of the community that it's seeking to engage with. So um, that core ethos definitely carries through everything we do, yeah. but it changes in the way that it manifests itself with each of our different developments. Well, again, I mean, it's fascinating. Um, we've got clever names for your projects. <laughs> You know, like the bunker and the tempest, you know, and all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, but I think people uh, would be happy to know that Little Woods is, uh, you know, opening for the public. Uh, you have the Liverpool uh, Film Fest. Uh, just, just to clarify, so 
with the Littlewoods building isn't opening for the public. Um, that's a little way off yet, but the depot is on the Saturday the 15th. So let's just understand, right? There's so many words on this paper. <laughs> but yeah, um, thank you for the clarification. So, but the Film and Food Fest is July 15th. Yes, in the yeah, depot. In the depot yep. and everything like that. And then hopefully more things will be coming um, afterwards. Yes. If they just pay attention. Like if somebody wanted to follow uh, uh, that kind of scenario, where, where, uh, where would they look? Follow us on social, uh, on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, capital and centric capital and centric yeah. yeah um and all or, of that or information could they is always Little Woods project or... um most things will come through our main okay. uh, twitter handle anyway so if you follow that then you'll get information across all of our projects yeah yeah well john you know like i said uh, i want to just thank you for your time you know i'm pretty sure you're a busy man and everything like that but i want to just thank you for uh coming on our show uh engaging with the community letting them know that uh what you guys are all about and your ethos and i think a lot of people have been fascinated about edge lane and what's happening over there and actually you've been clarifying it because as you can see even in my confusion <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure other people were like so confused. So I want to thank you for that and making it all very clear. So, again, I want to thank my guest, John Moffitt, uh, the Managing Director of Capital and Centric. I'm your host, Chase Johnson Lynch. You've been listening to the Liverpool Community Podcast. And you know what? For now, we out of here.